what do we need and how do you see the future of uh, this epidemic? Sorry, I'm late. But hello, I'm Ahmed Balu, this is my visa for access. Well, the substance abuse, the last one, the outreach of the Madaris, the Tanamis, the Amala, the Tanamis, and the last one, the outbreak patient, the initial intake. Sorry, that's the man. وبلشوا عندهم بالاكسس عندنا ثيرابيست وعندنا في ريكفري كوتشز من هول اللي كانوا عندهم كانوا مدمنين وطلعوا من الادمان وصاروا هن صار عندهم سيرتيفيكيشن وبيشتغلوا مع اللي عندهم يشتغلوا الادمان ومع العائلات عندنا ثيرابيست وسايكايترست بالاكسس اولسو انا هلا بلشت الشغل مع ديفون بوليس صار لي سنه ونص تقريبا ولما يكون عندهم كل ما عائلة دق 911 يتصلوا بالبوليس بيطلع رابور لما يطلع رابور بيطلع بيحطوا الانفورميشن تبعوا الشخص فنحن نروح لعندهم ونتصل مع العائلة او الشخص ونجرب نعرفوا شو من البروجرامات الموجودة واللي نحن ما عندنا اياه بندلهم عليه مثلا الاوت الانتك بيشن هاي عنده انتك صحيح ومن ما نعملهم بنحطهم بالسيستم عنا بنعملهم ريفرنس للانتيك بيج من بده يروح على الانتيك. واهم شيء نحن عملنا نراقب انه المدارس نعمل اويرنس ونعلم التلاميذ والمدارس والاهالي مشان هن ما يبلشوا بنفس السايكل How do you see the future, Mr. Balloon? How do you, uh, how, what do you see the needs okay. of today? I mean, how do you see the needs of today? And how do you see the needs of today? Now, we have to talk about the shame and stigma. And we have to talk about the people who are in the world. You know, as a person who is in the world, and you have to talk about the people بس بدك مين يستفيد منه اوكي وبدك لانه هلا اخذت النهار هو الشخص اللي عنده من هو بده يكون تيجي منه هو قد ما يكون في برنامج موجود بده هو يكون مقتنع وجاهز ليفوت بالثيرابي او بالريكفري سيستم هلا حاليا البرنامج موجود بالفيوتشر انا بتصور انه الجاليه بتتصل مع بعض الجوامع والكنايس يفتحوا البويب لبعض ويصير في اتصالات مع بعض ويعرفوا انه هيدا هيدي مشكلة عايشين فيها مش بس برات ديربون بديربون وبرات ديربون يعني الكل بيتأثر فيها اوكي وهذا انه يعرفوا انه الادكشن انه هيدا مرض ما بتخلي الشخص يكون انه هو اقل من الشخص الثاني لانه ما هيدا المرض بيصير مع الكل اوكي بس انه هيدا اهم شيء انه لازم الكوميونتي تبعتنا تعرف انه الادمان هيدا صار مرض ولما واحد مريض بده تحكي له والبروجرامات موجوده انا يعني بشوف بالفيوتشر انه نتعرف خصوصا عنا بالجيلي تبعتنا انه الادمان هيدا مرض بده تحكي والبروجرامات موجوده وانا بتصور انه يعني نشوف انه يعني ننتصر على هالمرض Okay. Um, it, would you mind if I speak in English? Uh, you sure? English is okay? Yeah. You should have told me earlier. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ali Sayyid, uh, founder and CEO of Hype Athletics, uh, as well um, the founder or executive director of the Safe Substance Abuse Coalition. And I agree with uh, a lot of my, my partner's uh, words. Um, the, from, from 2001 when we started Hype Athletics, uh, the idea was to provide kids with an opportunity to be in a drug-free, violent-free, and diverse athletic environment. Coincidentally, after I started Hype within six months, actually four months, 9-11 came. Now we look at the Arab community and the effect that 9-11 had on the Arab community from the 
stigma of even being an Arab or a Muslim and the shame of being an, an Arab or a Muslim or an Arab American or a Muslim American primarily because of what media has done to us, right? So growing from that aspect, you know, and understanding the effect that that has, the marketing effect that that has on the minds of our children and the, the, the desire to want to fit in has caused a, a very large gap in understanding the Arab community's mental health disorders. So when we started off with hype, I started off with programs, sports programs, the things that kids love to do, play soccer, basketball, and football, and baseball. And our work was primarily prevention focused. But after about six or seven years, many parents just like you would come to me and say, you know, I think my son is obese, or my son or daughter are smoking cigarettes or marijuana or they're doing bad in school. So now we had to take a step back and we had to understand what risk factors are. What causes this young boy and girl to eventually commit crime, do drugs, be, be what you don't want any kid to be, let alone our own kids. So these risk factors we started identifying in the Arab community were not only bullying and harassment and uh, targeting race, religion, ethnicity, gender, the scarf, the hijab, you know. But it also uh, included poor academic performance, single parent households. What kind of effect? How many of you know someone who lives in a single parent household? Every one of us. Every one of us knows somebody, that has an amazing effect on the kid's upbringing. So for hype, and for SAFE, what we identified was the need to fulfill these gaps in our community. To be the father, to sometimes be the mother, to be the sibling, to be the mentor, the role model for these kids. So we began to offer tutoring, mentoring, as the young lady announced in the beginning, substance abuse prevention, education, life skills, uh, things like that. That's what we tried to do. Um, I know we had great organizations, we have great organizations in, in the city and in, for the Arab community. Um, now, this is the past. The present, we are working on eradicating drugs in the Arab community within the next 10 years. Okay, I, I don't like the drug field. I don't like helping people off drugs. I'd rather them not be on drugs, right? None of us wanna, none of us like the field. It was thrown on us. And it was thrown on us because of the lack of understanding within the household, within the school, within the community, a lot of the families were heading to the to the uh, to the imams, the clergy, the shuka and the imams and the siyid. They're going to the mosques, saying, you know, Malam, help us. My son or my daughter are doing A, B, and C. Well, to equip ourselves as a community moving forward, some of the things that need to be included are some of the things that were mentioned, uh, such as partnership. Opening the doors is one thing. Understanding. There's over 40 different types of mental illnesses. There's no way I can even tell you all of them right now. But understanding if, if anxiety, depression, and um, you know uh, stress, and what other mental disorders are, are, are tied into those. Okay, um, and you know looking ahead in the future and understanding what we need to do as a community to eradicate drugs to understand. The problems that cause it, because not everyone, sometimes and they become sick, right? So they go to a doctor for a back problem, and you, parents, and me, we don't understand what these medications are, the names of the medications, and so on. So, you know, we don't know the side effect. You take a blood pressure, blood pressure medication, it affects your liver, you take a, um, a testosterone booster because you're constantly tired, or an Adderall, and it causes adverse side effects on, on all sides of your brain. So, you know, it's it's us within the next 10 years taking a full pledge on learning what we need to do to heal, how we have to heal, and understand what the doctors are telling us because we trust them more than we trust Rabna, right? We go to the doctor, whatever the doctor says, and we say, okay, no problem, doc. You want to have Ali? No problem. You want to have, you know, I have this disease or that disease? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conclude, because I know you have multiple questions, but you know, we, we, have, we have a very serious problem in our community. We have thousands of kids, boys and girls, that are on the streets 
around Dearborn and outside of Dearborn, addicted to heroin and crystal meth. And I'm not even talking about the psychotic medications such as Adderall or the Xanaxes and all the other Klodopins and, uh, and, and so on. There's thousands of medications, but let's go to the illicit, understand the difference. There's pharmaceutical and there's illicit street drugs. The street drugs are made by man and the, the harmful effect of these drugs on the minds of our, of our kids is extraordinary. Imagine you give a quarter to a young five-year-old kid and you tell him, here, go put it in the gumball machine. And two gumballs come out for one quarter. Isn't that boy excited? Imagine you take a drug and you put the quarter in and a whole truckload of gumballs come out at you. And then every time you reuse that drug, it's to get that same feeling of a truckload of gumballs falling on you. So this is the predicament that we're facing as a community and it's gonna take partners and community organizers to provide us with the platforms to educate. All of us collectively have to be educated. I'm not a professional in the field. There are people that are much smarter than me in this field, but we are filling a service that's needed. And like you, you're gonna be called upon to join our army and to fight this fight with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Adnan.